Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Eden Robertson. I'm a postdoctoral researcher with the CoGenes team. I'm really grateful to be able to present for you all today. I do apologize that I'm not able to attend in person as I'm currently working over in the US at the moment. But today I wanted to share a bit about our Gene Compass project, our approach to providing caregivers with high quality, relevant and understandable information about their child's genetic epilepsy. So in about 15 minutes, I'll go over quickly what Gene Compass is. And then I wanted to share a few of our lessons learned along the journey of this project. And then I'm gonna hand over to our wonderful Gene Compass information link and Natalie to share some top tips with you when searching online for information. So before I dive in, I want you first to just take a deep breath and think, when did you last search for information online for your child's condition? Where did you search for information? What did you find? Was it what you were after? Did you understand it? Was it useful? So if you could recall a time where you felt overwhelmed with information or you couldn't find any, you are not alone in your experience. As a parent, your desire to understand your child's condition and to have that greater certainty about what to expect is completely normal. But when it comes to rare diseases, like genetic epilepsies, this quote from American author John Naisbitt really captures the experience of many of families that we're seeing. We are drowning in information, but staff for knowledge. So this concept of drowning in information, there is just so much information out there to try and understand and compile but we're starved for knowledge. There is just little that is relevant or that's easy to understand it has really formed the backbone of Gene Compass. So Gene Compass is an information linker service. It allows parents to submit as many questions as they like about their child's condition. So we aren't a clinical service. We're not trying to take over from the clinicians and the, and the clinics that you already see. We don't provide individual patient care and treatment recommendations because of that. So the types of questions that our service answers about expected comorbidities, natural history information, support resources, what research might be conducted or new research that's being conducted on, on your child's condition, how gene therapies or precision medicine might work. So the reports that we prepare in response to your question are personalized so that we are answering your specific question but we also take into account things like the sex of your child, their age, their genetic diagnosis, if they have one. So once we've prepared your personalized report, we send that straight back to you as the caregiver and also to any health professionals that you nominate in questionnaire one to receive it. So that would be your pediatrician, neurologist, and your GP. So I just wanna show you a quick example of how this works. So this is Sarah. Sarah is a mum of a beautiful four-year-old girl with a suspected genetic epilepsy. Unfortunately, they haven't received a genetic diagnosis yet. So like many parents, Sarah jumps online late at night when she can't sleep to see what she can find. So she starts by Googling. She has no idea what to Google. She decides on searching just for genetic epilepsy and she comes across many websites. Some look reputable, some don't although she isn't really sure and she's not sure what's relevant. The amount of information is completely overwhelming for her. She has no idea about genetics. She has no idea about health. So she tries to look at Google images to see whether there's a simple explainer that might kind of give her that background information that she needs to understand other resources. But at this point, Sarah is completely exhausted. So she closes her laptop, having become too distressed and feeling none the wiser. The next day, Sarah receives an invitation to the Gene Compass Project. She completes the first questionnaire online, which gives her four months of access to the Gene Compass Information Linker service. Over this four months, she can submit as many questions as she likes. So she completes her questionnaire one online and then submits her first question, question as well, also by the online link. She decides she wants to submit a second question she goes ahead and does so. Pretty simple, takes her two minutes to complete each, to submit each question. 
So the questions go then to our information linker who begins to prepare a report to answer Sarah's specific questions. So the information that our information linker search uh, obtains is going to be high quality, it's reliable information and it's relevant to that specific question and the child um, of Sarah's. So the information linker will search information from peer-reviewed literature, um, medical literature and translate that in a really understandable way. Our multidisciplinary team then works with the linker to review and revise that report to make sure that it's clinically accurate, it's relevant to that family and it's going to be of value. The Gene Compass team, once that report's been finalised, then emails it directly to Sarah so she's getting access to it as soon as it gets finished. It also gets emailed to her health professionals that she nominated in questionnaire one, again, her paediatrician, her neurologist and her GP, so that her whole um, child's treating team have access to this information. So apologies for the quality of this, um, this image and you won't be able to read it, but this is what Sarah's report would look like. So the report is written in simple English. We have really tried to make sure that how we're preparing these reports is written in a way that parents will understand and not feel overwhelmed with. So we use dot points to get through um, information across. We also use icons to help improve readability. We also um, include links, um, which link out to other resources that we believe are reputable and reliable for further information. So that for those parents who do want to access further information. Um, we also include a list of references so parents can read up further and also understand where this information is coming from. So not only are they learning the information about that specific question, they're also learning the process of online searching for information. And we finish with a disclaimer as well for medical legal purposes. So over the past four months of running this program, there's a few key lessons when it comes to family's information needs for their child's genetic epilepsy that we have learned. So the first is research opportunities. One of the most common questions we've received so far has been, what research opportunities are available for my child? So the research studies may be a clinical trial for new treatments, or they could be psychosocial related, like the Gene Compass Project itself being a clinical trial of a psychosocial intervention. Um, it's important um, when it comes to research opportunities to know that what's available now isn't always going to be the case. New research opportunities are coming up all the time. So if you get in touch with GITA or support groups, they're a great way to keep updated as to what's becoming available. Um, parents um, should also consider registering for the Australian Clinical Trials website. And I've got the QR code there, which links to that to a video that we've created. And the URL for that video is also there. This video shows you how to register for the clinical trials website and then receive email alerts so that you can be updated with any clinical trials that may be coming available that your child could potentially be eligible for. Another common question that we've been receiving is what will happen as my child gets older? And natural history studies are a great way for us to be learning more about genetic epilepsies. So I know that natural history studies have been discussed a, a bit already at this conference. So if you missed that talk uh, earlier, I do recommend you go back and watch that one um, and learn more about the natural history study that's gonna be starting up later in the year um, by the Center for Research Excellence. So natural history studies are a really important step in building our knowledge about how genetic epilepsy affects children and adults over time. Learning more about this helps us develop new medicines and new therapies. So what they involve is a collection of medical information via questionnaires and interviews, and they often um, collect information from the, your child's medical records. So they differ from what are known as registry studies um, as they involve regular follow-ups. And so that could um, usually mean yearly follow-ups, although each study differs. Um, registry studies are a point in time research study to find out what's happening with your child um, right now or what's happening in your child six months ago. A natural history study um, in comparison tracks your child regularly over a period of time so we can see the natural history of how your child is developing over a long period of time. So another question we've been asked quite a lot about is the prevalence of certain conditions. And this question is actually quite difficult to answer. Um, and that's because many individuals will not undergo genetic testing. Um, 
another reason is because there's no shared database at this time that collates all of this information. But connecting with support groups are a great, great way to estimate the prevalence across Australia, but also to meet others in the community who have similar experiences. So I will now hand over to Nat, who will share some top tips when searching for information online. Thank you so much. Great. Hi, I'm Natalie. As Emma mentioned, I'm a medical writer. I've just joined the CoGenes team. Amazing group, um, doing amazing stuff. Um, so privileged to be part of their team and so happy to be speaking to you today. Hope what I tell you is of some use. Um, grab me if you want more information. So we've come across a lot of questions, um, a lot of it requires a lot of literature searching. And I can't even imagine what it'd be like to be someone without a medical background trying to do what we do. So we've just collated a few tips and ideas for you guys just to help you on your way. You might already be further down the journey. This is probably, I'm telling you what you already know, but um, hopefully some of it will be of use to you. Uh, so, so the most important thing I would say when you are looking for things online, which you probably already know, just be really careful about reliability, credibility, trustworthiness. It's, they come up all the time. So we've got a few tips there. So going to a reputable website, um, a government organisation, uh, um, hospital, say Sydney Children's Hospital, really great places to get up-to-date, reliable information that's been produced by people in the know. They're really experts. It is reviewed um, and checked over and over. Be a bit careful with YouTube, Facebook, social media, personal blogs really great for connecting but it's not often widely reviewed it's not they might not have checked all the literature so um, just when you read stuff there look for multiple sources check that a lot of people have said it if you're reading the medical literature check that it's been published by a few people uh, reviewed um, if you're in doubt go to your healthcare team ask them a question um, before you take it on board and um, just remember when you press search on Google. Google's not a doctor. Google's not sifting through that information for you. Google's not picking up their stuff and putting it at the top. Google's just giving you what their search engine um, is picking up. So search through it. It is very daunting and overwhelming. But um, if you follow a few simple trips like we'll hopefully tell you about today, you'll be able to find some more information that is use useful to you. Um, so I've just put some general health um, and medical and epilepsy information websites up here that we go to a lot. Um, Medline Plus is fantastic. It's really, it's written in very simple language. Penn New South Wales, which we've heard a few times today is also amazing um, and written by a lot of information from our team. Um, and then there's Mayo Epilepsy Action, Epilepsy Australia. All these great, um, really reputable people with scientific um, advisory groups and they're giving you great information and a lot of it's really up to date. Um, so if you're looking for information about genetic conditions, there's some great ones. Again, Unique does fantastic fact sheets for families, all written, very easy to understand, but very comprehensive. Um, so that's redchromo.org, it's a British, British organisation. Human Disease Genes is out of the Netherlands, but they're collaborating with, um, I think, a group in Australia and the US. Um, I think Emma is a moderator on one of their websites. They have a lot of information about specific genes and you can also contribute to their research. You can upload your own data. So they're collating information. So it's very current and very up-to-date. Um, shameless plug, I also work at the Centre for Genetics Education. We have a lot of basic genetics fact sheets, which um, they're, they're, they're a bit complicated, but hopefully useful in some way. And NORD, National Organization for Rare Diseases in the States, is also really great for basic genetics information. But you might read all of those and then still want more information. So you're sitting there like Sarah in Eden's, um, oh, it's a bit funny, um, Eden's case study, and you're wondering, where do I start? So we also wanted to just suggest that you give yourself a set time maybe half an hour, maybe an hour, don't stay up all night. It, it becomes, um, can become very tiring and you can become overwhelmed and distressed by what you read if you find something that is too hard to understand. Um, just also, I'm running through this quick plan and we're getting close to the break. Just keep in mind that um, it is a very new field. As you all know, a lot of these genes have only just been discovered. There's not much out there right now for a lot of them, but there will be. So if you keep an eye over the top and keep in touch with together, they can keep you in touch with everybody. You might want to just look broadly at um, genetic epilepsies and general symptoms and conditions rather than a specific diagnosis because you might not find anything. Um, and just keep in mind no information now 
does definitely not mean no information ever. Um, so this was a message from me as a writer. When I start out, I don't go straight into the hard stuff. Start at the simple stuff, go to Medline Plus, go to the really simple ones and read there. Um, it's really tempting when you've got a long list of places, but really try and keep it simple. Um, it can be really upsetting if you don't understand it. You get words you don't get. Um, and I use genetics glossaries regularly, so don't feel bad if you don't understand it. It is very complicated. Um, so you can often find, if you're looking in um, the medical literature, you will often find a, a lay summary or a plain English summary. Highly recommend then if you can find them. Um, and graphical abstracts also have a lot of information. Um, put it in a very family-friendly way. So if you can find the right information and just try and look for the easy stuff, I think that's a good idea. This is for everybody everywhere. Dr. Google's not a real doctor and often brings up stuff that is really can be quite frightening. Don't put it aside if you can. I know it's hard, I tend to panic, but um, go to your, talk to your healthcare team and, and really don't do anything that you don't make changes based on what you read on the net because you, you just, it's so variable what you find out there. Um, Finishing up, if you have any questions, like Eden said, we have the Gene Compass and we're taking specific um, questions from families. If you're eligible, you can submit a question. My recommendation would be to do it very soon. The pilot program and the possibility to opt in to our program, if you're eligible, it ends in a couple of weeks. You can actually sign up now and not submit a question for three months. So that's a good option if you think it might be useful. Um, there's our number and you can have a chat to me if you're still interested or email us if you want any more information if we can help you because that is why we are here to help you so thank you for your time.